So what have you not got if you're a retail trader? I'm talking about a, um, a, a guest in the market, a, a person with finite uh, capital, a uh, relatively small amount of, uh, of capital. You're not perhaps doing it all day long. You, you look at the market when you can, all those sorts of things. So what have you not got? What's your disadvantages? Well, for, number one uh, is money. It is a big boys game, and if you think about it, you know, if you have a small amount of money, it's relatively easy to lose the lot. And, and for many people, it's game over when you've lost the lot uh, of it. And so, and um, people uh, do feel that they can make a living and uh, give up their day job and this sort of thing, and, um, and uh, with my money. And they say, well, I've done well with trading, and so I'm going to give up my income and exchange it for trading. But think about this, and, uh, and do this little calculation in your head. Um, think about, okay, I'm going to give up my job and I'm going to become a trader. What do I need to live and keep my family and to pay my rent and all those kind of things and have the, not an improvement in my lifestyle, just the same lifestyle. Hopefully I'm going to improve it, but let's just say the same lifestyle and say, say it's X amount of money. Now, let's say then, um, what um, return do I need to generate X? And don't forget, X is only to be the same as I am now. And uh, let, let's just take some round numbers. Uh, just say, let's say £100,000. It's only because it's a big, you know, it's an easy number for me to work with. Um, so, how, um, how, uh, let's say I need £100,000 to pay my mortgage, to put my kids through school and all those things, which I'm happily doing with my existing job um, as a property developer or as a whatever I'm, I'm doing. And I'm going to swap this for this other risky job where I won't get paid every month if I'm ill and get the flu you know, and I have to stop working, nobody pays me, nobody looks after me, all those sort of things. But uh, let's say I've got this amount and it, I've, I've said it's 100,000. So what would be a reasonable expectation of, of return uh, for me as a trader? So do you think it's reasonable to feel comfortable that if I traded for myself with my experience as I've been doing, um, you know, as part time and I'm going to want to do it now full-time, that I could make a, a return of uh, 25%, 50%, something like that. I feel comfortable uh, that I could, I could do that. Now, that's a very big return, isn't it, um, uh, those sort of numbers. But let's say you do feel confident that you can do that. Then you must also look at uh, the drawdowns that you've seen in order to get that uh, kind of comfortable 50%. Presumably, sometime you made more than 50% because that's just an average uh, number for you. So what sort of drawdowns um, could happen? How many months were you not positive? Did you have to sit through negative returns uh, in order to finally eventually end up with this really large number of, of 50%? So then um, to get, let's say that you're happy and you're convinced and you're confident that you are that sort of person. And that is a tall order, incidentally. Yeah, I hope you realise that. So it's very difficult to make 50%. Believe me, it is. And to feel confident that I'll do it next year and the year after and the year after that. It's a tall order uh, to do that. But let's say you think confidently you will be able to do that. So then you say, well, 50% is now my 100,000. So how much do I need capital in order to um, produce the uh, 100,000. So what's the answer to the question? 200,000. 200, so I need 200,000. Now, but hold on, 200,000, um, but um, that won't be enough because what about the drawdown? And um, so um, uh, I will need some multiple of 200,000 if I, for example, the drawdown was a 50% or something like that on it. So I might need twice 200,000. So let's say it's, uh, it's 400,000, 500,000. So people really, really underestimate what they need to start with. And they say, but I've really worked hard and, and doing my job every day and I turned 10,000 into 50,000 and now I'm ready to go. No, you're not ready to go. And one thing is actually very certain is you're going to lose all your money. That's it. You are. You'll lose your money before you get into the profitable run. It's, it's most likely not enough money to, 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 to become a professional trader. And in my experience, and I have been a broker, 
This is the main reason. It's not to do with people not being good traders or not learning, not working hard enough, not any of those things. It's being undercapitalized. And it's just too near naught, you know, you're just too near naught. You're trading in a big, you're in a big biz boys game, the, everything's big, and, um, and so you have not got many chances of losing, not compared to an institutional trader who's got many more chances of losing, and it's still game on uh, for him. So the number one cause, I think, of, um, of disappointment, disillusion, giving up, all that kind of thing, is actually there was no chance in the first place because the people were undercapitalized in the first place. So, and it's a big shame because a lot of the people also, let's say you might start with 50,000, which is a, quite, is a lot of money, uh, truthfully is a lot of money to have spare to speculate with. It, uh, you know, you have to be quite a wealthy person to actually have 50,000 uh, to speculate with. Um, that um, uh, people often it, don't realise how long it takes to learn how to trade. And they start trading, and of course, if you've got, uh, you want to trade and you want a profitable trade to be meaningful to you, and losing trade to actually hurt a bit <laughs> as well. <laughs> and otherwise, what's the, you know, what's the point of it? So you might, let's say, that um, a winning trade to be meaningful to you might be two, three thousand dollars or pounds, something like that. And a bad trade might be five, seven hundred pounds or something that, ooh, ouch, uh, sort of uh, trade. If it's, if it's 20 pounds, well, who cares? But, you know, it's got to hurt a bit. Now, the problem is you don't get many of those type of trades before and you don't have to have an unusual bad run in order to run out of money. And it's a big shame because the beginning is the learning process. And I've watched people um, uh, learning and getting better, but their capital has been so depleted and their 50 has become 10, and now they're beginning to get the hang of it and actually understand it. But of course, from getting 10 back up, even to 50, where they started, five times as much is a very tough proposition. If they doubled their money, that'd be terrific, but they've only got 20, it's only 20,000. So I think if I, you know, I know this is maybe disappointing news to a lot of people, you know, but this is real world. You know, the fact is that the size of the, of the business you're in here is large and um, it's unforgiving. And um, uh, if you don't start with enough or start small enough, that's the other thing. And you see people as, uh, want to trade bigger, particularly at the beginning, because they've got the money. So I'm, I'm a 10 lot trader or 20 lot trader, but you can learn as much from trading one lot and two lots and start small and realize that most likely in any business when you're learning at the beginning, it's a learning process, there's a cost in it. And the learning in this business is to lose money, really. That's how you get the experience and uh, um, skill uh, from it. And you need lots of opportunities there. And if you keep at it, it is possible to come out the other side as a winner, but not possible to come out the other side as a winner if, it's, if you've run out of money. Okay, so if you are one of those people starting this game, have a pot of money, trade small, you know, really trade small. Trade for real. I, I'm not a big fan of practice trading because you've got to feel it. It has to leave your account and, ooh, ouch. Yeah, you know, but, uh, you know, it's too easy when it's just a pretend trade. You can just ignore it because it never really happened uh, there. So it's got to be real, but, you know, losing £100 and then making £500 and losing... 150 and making 300, you can learn a lot from that sort of operation there and basically realise that you're on a learning game um, and you've got to go through the apprenticeship and there's the, if you happen to be lucky and win a lot at the beginning, you know, be smart and realise that that's um, just the run of things. You know, you could have started badly or you could have started well, but these, these are sort of random events there. It means nothing. It doesn't mean you're a great trader. You just started with a good run uh, there. That, that's another uh, thing. So the second, the second thing is that the, um, uh, the, uh, typically in these um, uh, institutional operations where you have got prop traders, so genuinely people trading like you but in a larger scale, and the, what happens is that people are given an amount of money or amount of credit to trade with, and their job is to trade. <coughs> it's not to protect the money and uh, come back and say, I, I um, 
you gave me um, half a million to trade with and here is, I've looked after it and you've got half a million back. No, that's not what they want. They want you to go and put the money at risk and, and, and uh, trade large and trade aggressively and make significant amounts of money with it. They understand that you may lose the half a million, but then they'll give you another half a million if they, if they still feel that you will do it. Now, that isn't the case with a private investor. So they'll be recharged. They'll probably be recharged every year. Unfortunately, for many people, they're given more money. So it was half a million this year. They did well. They made two million with their half a million. Then the, then the institution will give them another five million. And now go do it the same, bigger there. And this causes big problems for people because people can be good at one amount of money and not good at another. It's, you think it should be in your head just a multiple. But it, you, know, you say, well, a normal loss for me with my half a million <coughs> is 30, 50, 60,000. But then you make it 10 times bigger and it's um, 300 to 600,000. It doesn't feel proportionally the same. It feels a lot, lot more. And, you know, human minds can't think proportionally like that. So a lot of traders come unstuck, unstuck because of the level that they're at, these changes of levels, which often the boss will reset you at a new level of, um, of money. So, um, uh, so they've got, if you like, that advantage, but they're under a lot of pressure, of course. Their job is to make money. Um, people want to sit in their seat. There are other people, and if you're not doing it, somebody else will be sitting in your seat, and you'll be gone. <laughs> That's how it is. But you can make unusual amounts of money uh, if you do well in it.